He says, be imitators of God, which means as beloved children, live in love as Christ loved you and gave his life for you. Now think about that. When, when he says live in love, this is the kind of love he's talking about. Because this is the kind of love that God loved us with in Jesus Christ when he laid down his life for us. We are to live in that. We're to imitate God and replicate. The, we're to respond to evil and to sin the way God responds to evil and sin in us. Now Paul makes this explicit in Romans, among other places, in Romans 12. Listen to this. He says, Blessed, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Instead, go to the opposite extreme. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. This means you'll bring conviction on them. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So it's like this. And now you get a little sampling of my great artistic skills. Here's the thing. So someone's mean to you. Now this applies for, it applies to our interpersonal conflict. It applies to national conflict. It applies to every kind of conflict. But let's start with kind of our everyday conflict. Someone's mean to you. Okay, they, they strike at you. They gossip about you. you know, they give you an angry face. Right? This, this, this is the, the meanie. They're meanie towards you. Now there's an impulse in you that wants to be meanie back at them. Right? There's a party that says, oh, you did that. Well, watch this. You want to defend yourself. You know, you want to retaliate. Uh, so you, you want to go like this. Okay, fine. I'll, 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 you want to be mean to me? I'll be mean to you. <sighs> gossip about me? I'll gossip about you. Say nasty stuff with my kids. Well, I'm going to slaughter your kids. It uh, goes around and around. And see, when we do that, when we do that, now we're being overcome by evil. Now the, the nastiness that's directed at us gets internalized. We absorb it. It defines us. And we just mirror what they're doing. So now we're defined by them. We internalize that, that, that uh, malice, that animosity. And so we come back at them. Now, here's the thing. When you come back at them, you just justified in their mind what they did to you. Now, you feel just doing this because you thought what they did was unjust, but that's exactly how they feel. Whatever the reasons were for coming after you and being nasty to you, you just confirmed them, and you just ensured that they'll come back at you again. As long as you stay in this mindset, well, then you'll come back at them. And now we got the little dance that's been going on throughout history, this little spiral of animosity. Tit for tat, quid pro quo, get evenism, retaliate. And now the, this whole thing, at the center of this whole thing, is the ultimate nasty one, and that is the principalities and powers. Now the powers are playing you. The circle of animosity. So Paul says, don't be overcome with evil by retaliating. Leave all judgment to God, he says in this passage, and instead do it like this. When they come at you with their nasty, oh, no, I don't know, like this. I can't even draw stick people. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, they're, they're little, being little demons towards you. When they do that, now, nor, normally, uh, we consider it pretty noble and praiseworthy if a person just doesn't respond. Uh, I'm not going to respond to that. And in Minnesota, that can take the form of responding, but just in a real passive-aggressive way. <laughs> we won't let them know that we're responding, but we'll do it sideways. Uh, we're good at that. But we think it's noble. Oh, you know, just, just walk away. Just don't do it. And that is noble. It's better than this. But see, this isn't what God did for us. He didn't just refrain from judging. He didn't just not give us what we deserved. Um, you know, he went overboard in the other way. He went, he, when pushed, he pushed back, but he pushed back with the opposite kind of push. We push on him by rejection. He pushes on us by adopting us as children. Uh, he, he, he fights. It, it's not a, he's not a passive, just refrainer from judgment thing. No, there's an active component of this. He passionately comes back at us, but he comes back at us with love, like this, see? But self-sacrificial love, cross-like love. There's a cross in the middle of this. He gives his life for us. And so he confronts it here. And this is how we are to respond to evil. When there's nastiness done towards us, we're to respond the way God has responded to us when we were yet nasty. And so we respond through self-sacrificial love, asking, what can we do to bless them? Do the opposite of what they're doing. Look for ways you can serve them, the way God looked for a way to serve us. Uh, and so Paul says, if, if your enemy's hungry, and by the way, when he's talking about enemies, he's not just referring to grouchy people, though it applies to grouchy people, but this is a time when Christians are being persecuted. These are, these are really enemies here, okay? killer kinds of enemies. But look for how you can serve them. If they're hungry, give them something to eat. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. 
Because in doing that, two things happen. One, you're, 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 you're preserving. Now you're not defined by their nastiness. You're defined by the cross, by what God thinks about you on the cross, which is how we're always to be defined. We're in the kingdom insofar as we are defined by what God did for us on Calvary. And so you're, you're, you're guarding your own heart. Now you're overcoming evil with good in your own heart. You're guarding your own heart. You're not getting sucked into the undertow and buying into this demonic cycle that's been characterizing the world from, from the day of the fall. No, you're, you're now defined by, by Jesus Christ, and you're bringing Christ into the situation. You're kingdomizing the situation. So you overcome evil with good in your own heart, but you also open the possibility of overcoming evil in the other person's heart. Uh, coming at them and giving them the opposite of what you think they deserve, what, that, 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 that's like a pattern interrupt. It stops the flow of this cycle going on. And the contrast between the way they're treating you and the way you're treating them, that contrast exposes the wrongfulness of the way they're treating you. It brings it out to light. And in bringing it out into the open, it allows the person to see this and possibly turn from it. That's why Paul says you're heaping coals of fire on their head. Uh, you're, you're, you're bringing conviction on them. When you treat someone nasty and they keep on being nice to you, it doesn't feel good because it, it, it makes you look bad. And, and there's the possibility now that this person will repent and maybe even be reconciled with you. So now you're flowing in a different direction here. And now we got, love, love, they're, they're, this is a heart here. Uh, they're, they're, they get loving to you, so now you, again, are loving to them, and they're loving to you. And now we've got an entirely different kind of spiral going on. And at the center of this is not the principalities and powers. At the center of this is Jesus Christ and the love that he demonstrated on the cross. And now, see, you've turned this into a kingdom situation. 